All right. He's George Carl, Sacramento Kings, new head coach. And uh, Coach Jones is on the show. How is it, Coach? You doing all right? <laughs> well, <laughs> I can't deny that yesterday was a very nervous day for me, being on the court and talking to the team for the first time in the middle of the season, the day before trade deadline. It's, it was kind of a weird uh, karma. But uh, we had a good practice, and I'm glad to be back in the gym. I think that's probably the thing I miss the most is just, you know, the, the juice of teaching and watching a team develop and see them throw balls into the crowds and then, you know, how are you going to correct everything? So it was a good day. I was, I was, uh, Sacramento's treated me very, very well, and I'm happy to be back. Harder to coach or not coach? Uh, for me right now, I'd say it's harder not to coach. Um you know, I'm too, I'm too antsy. I, 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 you know, I just, just miss the the basketball family, the the juice of coaching a game and winning and losing, the, the, the you know, the, the, the just the momentum of uh, of an 82 game season and and watching it from a distance is kind of fun being an analyst, but. In the same sense, uh, you know, I think you, you know, I wanted, I wanted to get back in one more time. And, um, you know, Vivek gave me a chance here in Sacramento, and I'm, I'm happy to be back. What's the first thing to go on a coach? First thing to go as a coach, I would probably say the ability to connect and communicate with the players. I said, you know, I think as you get older, you don't have as much patience to do the daily management of attitude and egos and and so you run out of patience and when then you run out of if you, do, you run out of patience and to communicate then you lose the con- connection and then when you lose the connection i think they lose the respect well you get older they stay the same age <laughs> well you, i know i get older faster than they <laughs> age but uh, you know, you get you you do get you get you do get the grandfather effect every once in a while. You know, they give you a little dignity and respect because you're a little older and then maybe won a few games. But uh, do they know then, you played, George? That would be interesting. Uh, I I don't think so. I would say I bet you half the guys don't even know where I went to college, so they they probably probably don't know uh, if I played. Now, speaking of your college, oops. They, they they threw one away last night, man. I was screaming. I was throwing things at the TV. <laughs> and then the referees got them in this in the overtime. <laughs> oh, so you think they got jobbed? Well, it's a, it's you know they got a couple calls <laughs> to help them. <laughs> Wait, I mean they also made some big time mistakes, but they also got some calls that were home court calls. Does does Coach K get more calls than any other coach? Um, I don't know. I don't study the game much, but I, I, I do believe, I think, you know, the, the tough buildings and, and the great programs, it's just like the NBA. I think referees are human nature, you know. They, well, who they gets go, calls they, in they, the NBA? What what coach or, or player do you think gets preferential? <laughs> I can't say that. Okay, how, okay how, about, how about previous? <laughs> pre- how about coaches or players who aren't playing in, involved in the game now? How's that? Well, I, I just think I think buildings sometimes get calls. I think in Staples Center, I think when when you got the Laker, Laker, the building is hot and it's screaming. I think you know when Madison Square Garden was hot, when the Chicago Stadium with Michael was hot. I think the home court, the one of the advantages of a good home court is that the crowd and kind of intimidates or at least gives an air to the referee that you better make the right call. He's George Carl, Sacramento Kings head uh, coach, joining us, Dan Patrick Show. Are you going to hire Nancy Lieberman as an assistant coach? Dan, yeah, she's on my list. You know, we've been friends for a long time, and I've had some interactions with him, and I, I've always thought about it. You know, I think Patino had a woman on his staff at, at I think, uh, when he was at Kentucky. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, you know, it's always been out there, and, of course, Pop hired one this year, and it seems like it's working in a very positive way, so... You know, right now, I think that's a summertime decision for me. And organizing my staff is going oh, okay. to be in the summertime, and it's probably not going to happen now. Uh, you're you're coaching for an owner who certainly is interesting, thinking out of the box. And uh, do you do a four uh, on on defense and one cherry picking? What about that story? To help enlighten me here on your owner. I think he's just trying to find a way uh, to, you know, as you said, think out of the box and score more points. Um, uh, he he hired uh, 
a guy out of college that believes in, in shooting the three. I think the the D League team that he hired at Reno, I think, made 32 threes in a game. Um, and, and he's just experimenting with the game, which I think is great. I think it's great to experiment with the game and and try to find the edge before anybody else does. Wait, so you'd have four on defense. You'd, you'd, so you'd play a, a box, and then you'd I, have... I don't think we're doing that one. Oh, you're not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But I think I think you know trying to how do you pick up the tempo of the game and leaking out and cheating and cherry picking. There's always a little bit of a degree. I think a lot of teams run by shooters to get an advantage at times. And I mean, you could probably put certain defensive situations where shots were taken out of the corner, and you could release certain guys out of your top of your weak side defense, maybe to go down the court before before the rebound. I was also uh, thinking about you. Uh, I mean, you were there. ABA days as well, right? Yep, I was. In, I was. Uh, I think I was actually the first signed Spur, first player in Spurs history to be signed as a San Antonio Spur. Oh, did they retire your jersey? I don't think my jersey's been retired, but I, I think they had, did, did a top twenty-five, maybe top fifty players of Spurs, and I made that. <laughs> Probably 50. <laughs> but, <laughs> Next year it has to be 150. But when Clay Thompson has that unbelievable quarter, and and it uh, what surpassed George Gervin and tied George George Gervin, but George didn't have the three point shot back then. If if you had the three point shot, because I don't remember Ice being a deep shooter as much as you gave him that 18 to 20 footer, and he he didn't miss. But could you compare those two? What Clay Thompson did to when Ice was at his peak. Uh, I think Ice was a better a better scorer, and Clay was a better shooter. I think Ice just had this knack of his six eight, six nine, skinny, slender body. He could make shots, but he also could cut through a defense. He could he could finish inside. I think he had more ability to score points in different ways, and I think Clay is just an unbelievable, probably top five shooter of all time. Really, I think he's that good. Yeah, well, I mean, is he better than he, Curry? Well, I think they're both going to finish there. I think both of them are going to be top fives of all time. All right. Who else do you put in there? I think I put Ray Allen. Yeah. Um, I think Reggie's on the list. Chris Mullen might be on the list. Um, <clears throat> a guy that I had, even though he doesn't have a lot of history, but I think Dale Curry. Yeah. Steph, Steph's father was pretty was my, probably one of the best shooters I've ever had, along with Ray. I always thought Pejo Stojakovic was – one of the great shooters of all time. Yeah, I think Stojakovic is interesting. I, I, you know, his stroke was kind of awkward. Yes. So I, I, <laughs> as a perfectionist, as a coach, you kind of want the perfect form and the perfect stroke, and Pages wasn't perfect. Another guy that was pretty good from Europe was Petrovic. Yes, yes. I actually got to see him play. I was uh, in New York at the time, and, and I loved his enthusiasm. I, I just yeah. I thought that, you know what, you put him on the floor and he'd stay out there all night if you let him. And he he had an assassin mentality. He wanted he wanted to beat you. He had a little bit of a Michael Jordan attitude of he didn't 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 only want to beat you. He kind of wanted to embarrass you. We we were talking about uh, this earlier, where you look at the draft and uh, and it's amazing that there's so many kids that we miss on trying to figure out. And and I don't know if it's the lack of a body of work in college now of trying to say I have an idea of you know what size they're going to be, what kind of player they're going to be. It seems like it's harder and harder because we only get to see a little bit of you in college, whereas Grant Hill or Tim Duncan or any of these other players, we got to see him for three or four years. So how does how tough does that make your job now? I think it's uh, I think I think you're right on on the analysis that we don't get to see him play enough. And you know, in a lot of colleges, you can, you know you'll go scout a game and he'll get in foul trouble and he'll play 15 minutes. So you, sometimes you even you, you waste a trip sometimes and. Other times that you can go scout a guy and they'll play a box in one or a triangle in two against them and it basically takes them out of the game. So I think the college game is and the pro game are, are quite different. Uh, but there's no question uh, analyzing and, and scrutinizing the college players on, on one year. I think I think it'd be much better if we kind of had a two year project, even though I think the player associations doesn't want that. No, they don't. Uh, where is the NBA Coach of the Year award with Denver? It's in my office in Denver. In Denver? It's, I mean, in my house office in Denver. It's in my in my desk, and right above my desk. It's a beautiful trophy. It's one of my favorite trophies. It's a great trophy. And then you got fired. <laughs> yeah, it was fun, wasn't it? How did, 
How does that happen, George? I think a lot of it is based upon probably losing in the first round and being in a city for nine years. You know, people get, you know, I, I've always compared it. Someone told me a long time ago, the posse all, is always forming against you. And the more years you're there, the posse is never going to shrink. The posse is always going to get a little bit bigger. And so being in one city for nine years, the posse just got a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger. And you keep losing in the first round. And they just felt that excellence in the regular season isn't good enough. And, uh, you know, my big belief is I think, I think uh, you know, I think it's just the familiarity of being there nine years. It was the organization, maybe some of the, some of the people thought the, a change would be a better thing. Would you have fired you? Uh, no. no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes I mean, we're... my whole thing went on any coaching firing, and I've said this 50 times, and I really believe it. I mean, if you fire a coach, you should have a plan that you can give your season ticket holders and your, and your fan base a better coach. And, I mean, you know, I think that's that should be the reason to fire a coach. If you want to change, you should have the responsibility to change, to find someone better. Well, you look at the Nuggets this year, 20 and 33, and uh, headed south. We're probably going to unload some guys here at the trade deadline. They're very active out there. I don't know what will happen. It's got uh, about, about, about Aaron, three and a half hours left. Aaron Aflalo got traded to Portland. For how many? Uh, I don't know. That's all I got from uh, Adrian Wojnarowski. So, uh, do do we know who they gave up or what they get in return, Paulie? Did you see anything on that? Check yes. if Aflalo got traded to Portland. Yeah, so I, I don't know. They probably got a couple of guys on the move there. Are you guys going to be active? I think we're going to be very, very passive. I think uh, oh, they okay. want me to work with this roster and see how it goes and see if we can get to be a you know a 500 team or a little bit better than a 500 team in the last 30 games and, and then see what we do. If we do anything, we'll probably do something this summer. Well, uh, congrats, good luck, and uh, hope the posse doesn't get too big too soon. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Thank you, George. Glad to be back on your show. Thank you, bud. George Carl, Sacramento Kings head coach.